good to be with you here today. Pastor Al, thank you so much. I truly appreciate this, Pastor. You didn't have to, but thank you for the invitation to preach to this beautiful church. You guys look good. Some of you don't believe it. Tell your neighbor, he's talking about me, but just receive it. <laughs> but you, this is a beautiful church, amen. It's a good time to be a part of Victory Outreach San Diego. How many could say amen? God is definitely on the move in this church, and I'm just privileged to be here. I want to thank God for my salvation. I've been saved since I was um, 16 years old, 15, 16 years old. I gave my life to the Lord. I've been serving the Lord ever since. 20-something years later, I'm still serving the Lord. And I just want to thank God for this ministry. How many love this ministry? There is none like us. Amen. Who gets a bunch of people to say, hey, let's go to New York and just go out there and just meet the need? We do, right? That is all Jesus. I thank God for this ministry. I thank God for our founders. Amen. They're so precious to us. And um, just for the opportunity of doing what we do in this ministry, I don't take it lightly. Just recently, we just took over a church there in Victory Outreach Mesa. Amen. They better not be online because y'all in church right now. They probably snuck on, but I want to thank God for that church. That church has really been growing us. We've been seeing a revival, like just a wave of revival that has been taking place within our church. And I just want to give you a little taste of that. Is that okay? Is that all right? Take your seat, amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I hope you're going to buckle your seatbelt because um, the white boy gets crazy sometimes. I'm just saying. I, I love this thing. This podium's nice. I have one you can barely see me. I'm like, I tell the, uh, hey, give me a little stool. At least they can see me. When you're done with this, Pastor Al, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> But this is good. I like this. I can see everybody. I hope you can see me. Amen. But it is a privilege to be here, and I pray that tonight that you come open, you come ready to receive what the Lord has for you. How many are ready? All right. Don't sleep on me. I said, how many ready? I want you to turn to Mark chapter 8, verse 22. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. When you got it there, have it. And uh, for the sake of time, I think they might put it on the screen for us. That looks perfect. Mark chapter 8, verse 22, and I pray that today the Lord just ministers to your heart. I pray we go to another level after tonight. How many are ready for that? The Bible reads like this. When they arrived to Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus. They begged him, touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the, the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting in the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked him, can you see anything now? The man looked around, said, yes. He said, I see people, but they look, but I see them clear. I don't see them clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again. Somebody say again. And, and his eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored. Father, bless our time in your word in the name of Jesus. And everyone said. I want to take a few moments here today to talk to you a little bit about vision. Our church, we, this is not something that's new for our ministry. We always talk about vision. It's what we're, we're groomed in. It's, it's a part of our blood. It's a part of our DNA. But I just want to take just a few moments just to talk about vision. Because I truly believe if you have no vi vision for your future, you have no power for your present. We got to dive in. Amen. We just got to go in. Because if you have no vision for your future, if you can't see past today, then my friend, you have no reason to wake up in the morning. But I've noticed that now that I'm there in, in the city of Mesa, that I can't even sleep. All I do is think about the vision, dream the vision. I wake up to the vision. I can't stop thinking about the vision. And when I have that vision inside of me, what happens, it gives me the power, 
It gives me the ability to wake up in the morning and say tomorrow is a greater day because of the vision. I don't know if you've ever been uh, sideswiped or, or anything like that. I remember growing up, I grew up in San Francisco, and growing up in San Francisco, we don't have backyards. We have houses behind houses on top of houses in San Francisco. That's how we get down. So we didn't really have parks to go play in. We didn't have any of that stuff, to tell you the truth. So I remember going to school. I was in middle school. I'll never forget going to middle school. And they said, okay, we have PE, and we're going to play uh, uh, softball. I was like, okay, whatever that means. All right, let's do this. And so we were there. I actually got picked on the team, right? I was like, hey, I got picked on the team. I was, I'm down. I'm ready. And I remember they said, okay, I want you to go out to the field out there. I said, all right, let's go to left field. I'm out there. Left field, I'm out there just doing my thing. And I'm out there just stretching like, yeah, I'm out here, right? I'm just having fun out there. But in my mind, I'm like, I hope they don't hit it my way because I don't even know what to do with this thing, right? And so I'm out there, and I'm just stretching, and somebody hits the ball. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, somebody hits the ball. That's cool. And all of a sudden, I'm there, and I'm in my position. I'm ready. And as they're, the next guy comes out, he kind of gives me that eye. You ever get that eye? Like, I'm coming at you, bro. You better bring me a second. What you <laughs> so there I am in my position, and he just, pa, he hits it. And I'm like, ooh, it's coming my way. Naturally, the first thing I did is I put my hand up, right? So I'm there with my hand up. I'm like, yes, it's coming. I see it. But all of a sudden, this ball is like in the air, and the sun started blinding me a little bit. The sun hit, was blind. I was like, Where's that ball go? <laughs> I'm like, where's that ball? I know it's coming. Where's that ball? Pah! I was like, you ever see stars? Brother saw stars. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? And do you ever fall? You try to play it off? Like, oh, ain't nobody catch me, right? Nobody saw that. I'm on the floor trying to shake it off like, I hope nobody's seen me. <laughs> I hope nobody's seen that. And I'm looking for the ball, and I can't find the ball. The guy comes over. He goes, get up, dummy. And he throws the ball out. I was like, I was like, oh, I was just straight. I just had just jacked up my eye. But there I was in that moment where I was actually blinded for a second. And being sideswiped by this ball actually knocked my senses out. I don't know if you've ever been a pos in a position where your senses got knocked out. Right? You're like, what happened? Where am I at? I believe in life, sometimes you and I, we get sideswiped by stuff. We don't see it coming when it comes. We get sideswiped so much by life. Could somebody say Amen. How many of life just happens sometimes? We didn't ask to get sick, but it just happens sometimes. And it could sideswipe you in a sense where you lose all senses. I believe that many of us in this place, you might have had a vision or maybe you've seen something for your life at one time or another. But something happened along the way where you might have got sideswiped. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you lost something in life where you're not focused. You're not clear anymore. Am I talking to anybody? Come on, we come to church, right? Am I talking to anybody? Well, the Bible says that this man that we just read about, this blind man, as we read this story, we understand that this blind man actually had sight at one time. Because he says, I, I believe that you guys know the story, but he says that he seen men as trees, and that gives an e evidence that he, was, he had sight at one time. So when you begin to really think about it, this man had sight at one time, but what happened to the man that he lost his sight? I believe that what happened to the man is the same thing that happens to you and I at times, is that we got hit with something we didn't see coming. 
We didn't see that coming. And all of a sudden, we lost what we had our focus on. And this is where this man is. He's in a place where he used to see. He used to see clearly. But now he's in a place where he can't see at all. And he's in this place where he needs something to take place within his life. And as we look at this story, the Bible said that there was this this man, and as he arrived to Bethsaida, that he had a group of friends that actually led him by their hand to Jesus. Thank God for our friends that led us to Victory Outreach San Diego here tonight. This might be your first time here you're visiting. Well, thank God for the friend that invited you. Because he's seen that you needed something. And he knew exactly where to bring you to the church house. Come on. Well, you and I, sometimes that's how we get to church. Somebody led us. Somebody brought us here, right? So now we're here. And this blind man, his friends, his good friends brought him to Jesus. And now that he's in front of Jesus, his friends ask, please, can you touch him? Can you heal him? In other words, these friends have heard about this Jesus that's been going around doing miracles. His friends have been hearing about what God has been doing or Jesus has been doing in the synagogues as he preaches. So they have enough faith to believe for this guy. They have enough faith to believe that If God is able to save a heroin addict, come on, he could save somebody else too. If he had enough faith to say, man, that marriage was on the rocks, but look at what God is able to do. Grabbed him by the hand, brought him to Jesus. Now this man's in front of Jesus. This is where it's going to get good. You guys all right? Now he's in front of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus took the blind man by the hand. He took them by the hand. That blew me away. Because a lot of times when you're giving someone your hand, you're actually saying, lead me to wherever you want to take me. Giving someone your hand, especially if you're blind, means that I trust you enough that you're going to guide me wherever I can't see. Oh, You're going to guide me through whatever I got to go through, and I trust you, so I'm giving you my hand. I'm here to ask you a question tonight. I'm here to ask you, are you still willing to give Jesus your hand? Are you still willing to say, Jesus, I may have been sideswiped. I don't know what's happening in my life right now. Things don't look right. Come on. But I'm still willing to give you my hand. This guy was at a point that said, man, I'm going to give you my hand because I'm going to trust you. Are you still able to give him your hand in your marriage? Are you still able to give him your hand in your finances? To say, Lord, I'm a trust. I don't got it like that, but I'm believing that if I could trust you. He gave him his hand. Are you willing to still give God your hand? I don't know where you're at right now. I don't know what side swipe you. I don't know why you're misfocused. I don't know. But that's okay. As long as you're willing to give God your hand. He is willing to lead you out of stuff and guide you to wherever you got to be with him. Tonight, I feel like there's some people that are just, you're already giving them your hand. I feel like some faith is being raised up in this place. And they, man, I'm trusting God again. I'm believing again. How many feel that happening? The Bible said he gave him his hand. But not only that, but the Bible also says that he led him out of the village. This is so good. I love this part. This is so good. You like it? Better get a preacher white boy pretty soon because we're killing it tonight. (laughs) Gave him his hand. He led him out of the village. He led him out of the village. Bethsaida 
at this point in Scripture, it really talks about being in a dark place. Being in a dark place, or really a place of unbelief. A place of unbelief. The Bible says that they brought him this blind man. He's there with Jesus. Jesus takes him by the hand. And as he takes him by the hand, he begins to lead him out of the village. He leads him out of this dark place. He leads him out of this place of unbelief. You know where some Christians like to hang out? They like to hang out in that village. That village of unbelief. That village of I'm not good enough. That village of I got too much insecurities to get out of this village. The village of poverty. The village of this is just the way I am. Oh, y'all ain't ready. I'm getting warmed up. I'm getting, is that okay, Pastor? I feel like some hair grew back right now. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> some of us like to hang out in that village because we like the attention. <laughs> we like that. We like that. But I'm here to tell you, that's not the place where Victory Outreach San Diego hangs out. We hang out in the place of faith. We hang out in the place of the supernatural. We hang out in the place where God is moving like never before. We don't hang out in the place of unbelief. Some of us, we need to rise up and say, I'm getting out of this place tonight. Who said you can't open up a business? Whoever told you that lie, send that lie back. Say, that ain't for me. I live in a place that I am able to do all things through Christ who gives me strength. He led him out. I could just imagine this conversation with Jesus and the blind man. He led him out. Man, that conversation must have been mind-blowing. He must have been telling them stuff. I could just imagine him and Jesus taking, imagine you and Jesus taking a good walk. I just had a few moments with your pastor. I was just blown away. I was like, my God, I'm going to go back and change the whole church. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I got marching orders. I'm gone. But imagine spending some time with Jesus. Whoo. That man's faith must have been blown up. That man must have been like, man, I didn't do it. I know it. Come on. That's what I see in this story. I see, man, this guy must have been, man, that time must have been awesome with Jesus. He led him out of this village. Friends, we got to get out of that village. Friends, we got to believe for more. Friends, we got to believe for greater. Friends, you got to believe that you could be a homeowner. Friends, you got to believe that I am more than a conqueror. Friends, you got to get out of that village of unbelief and start believing. He led them. He led them by the hand. You know, one thing I tripped about blind people is they really know where they're going, in a sense. Blind people have figured out how to get places. <laughs> Watch. They know how to count steps. 52, okay, turn right. 10, okay. I'm here. You know most Christians are like that too? I'll prove it to you. Um, this is as far as I go. With my wallet, oh, this is as far as I. You stuck in that village, boy. You count your steps. No, 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 God, I don't go that far. 
Don't call me the full time because that, no, 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 that wasn't in my count. Are we preaching yet? That wasn't in my account. <laughs> so because it's not in my account, no, 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 I'm good. We stay stuck in our situation because we're not willing to give God our hand and say, lead me out. I don't care how many steps it takes. I don't care about the process. I don't care if this place is unfamiliar. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get my breakthrough. I got to do it. If you're tired of living the same old way, try something different. Try praying an extra 30 minutes. Try fasting a little. Is this too hard, Pastor? I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm excited. Sorry. <laughs> We're almost done. Is that okay? <laughs> you guys are, we'll preach all night then. No, just kidding. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he led him out of the village, this place of unbelief. He's out of it now. Some of you are out of it right now. I see your brains clicking. I see your hearts turning. You guys are coming out. I feel it. Some of you are feeling, you're just right there with me. Then spitting in the man's eyes, he laid his, eye, his hands on his eyes and asked, can you see anything now? Can you see anything now? You know what the biggest thing about it is within Christianity sometimes? is that we want to see the whole thing happen all at once. Right? Lord, I've been praying for my old man, but he ain't changed. He still dresses like a cholo. <laughs> we want, Lord, I've been praying. You want to see everything, right? But the funny thing about this story, this story is like a progressive healing. And this guy, he gets touched by Jesus. And in that first touch, he opens his eyes and he says, do you see anything? He says, I don't, I don't really see like the whole thing, but I, I see like men like trees. I see that. I see that. I'm here to ask you, Victory Outreach San Diego, what do you see? Do you see anything happening at all? Do you see something? Because if you could see something, then that means something is changing. A lot of us, we look at other people like, man, I'm not at that level. Well, you'll get there as long as you could see something happening now. If you could see something, it don't have to be the big picture. But if you could see something happening within your husband, something happening within your wife, something happening within your kids, they don't got it all together. But I see something happening on the inside. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to see the whole picture. As long as you start seeing something change, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just five minutes extra in prayer, that's something, my friend. Even you being here tonight, that's something, my friend. Saying, I'm here. Pastor, I'm here. I'll be here next week, too, Pastor. That is something. God is working on the inside of your life, and you got to start recognizing it. God wants to take us to another level, but that next level might not be the full scope of what you feel, but the next level might be just a tiny little step. That tiny little step could be the biggest step you take in your life. That tiny little step might be that step that you say, man, I may not have it all together, but I'm going to take just one step. If I could take one step, I may not see it all, but I see something. I see something. Do you see something, church? Do you see something happening in your life? Do you see God working in your life? You picking up the Bible, that's something. You being a witness, that's something. You grabbing your pastor's back and say, I got you, that's something. 
So wherever you're at, start opening your eyes and seeing something. This guy didn't see the whole picture, but he saw something. Is God working? Yes, he is. The Bible talks about this work working inside of us. We see something. He said, I see men. I don't see it clearly, but I see something. They look like trees walking around. And the Bible said he placed his hands on the man's eyes once again. He placed his hands on the man's eyes once again. And he said, what do you see now? He said, I see clearly. I see this whole thing clear now. When you get touched by God, I didn't see the whole scope in my life. All I knew is that I was called. That's it. I'm called, and I'm just going to keep walking. I stumbled. I kept walking. I slipped. kept walking. But I kept walking. I kept moving. I didn't see it clearly. But going to conferences, going to conventions, coming to churches like this, coming to the altars, letting God touch me again, again, and again. You may not see the whole thing clearly, but as long as you keep coming to church, my friend, as long as you keep going to the throne of Jesus, as long as you keep letting the Holy Ghost touch you, as long as you keep letting that Holy Spirit stir you up, my friend, one day you will see it clearly. You're going to rise up and say, man, pastor, I see it. I see I got a calling in my life. I see what you're calling me to, Lord. I believe we have some group of people like that today. Now you're going to get zapped by the Holy Ghost. As the keyboard comes, you're going to get zapped by the Holy Ghost because he wants you to see clearly. He wants you to see what he has for your life. Why do we limit God so much when he has so much for us? Don't limit who your God is. You know, there's one thing that just totally annoys me. I'll just tell it to you because I feel good right now. What annoys me is that when people say, oh, yeah, he's, he, he's always been like that. And he'll, he'll never change. And this or that or the other. It bothers me not so much for that person, but it bothers me because I know the power of God. People go through cycles and cycles. I get it. I, I understand that. But I also understand how the power of God is able to zap somebody. When I took over my church, there was a guy that just brought his drugs to the, we were just barely there, brought his drugs to the, to the altar, left them there, went out, zapped. I mean, got zapped, left, you know, the altar. Seven months later, the guy's been clean, serving the Lord. He's... But this guy has literally been in this cycle, in this cycle, in this cycle, and I can, and I can, and I can't. You know what drives me crazy is when people say, oh, he's always going to be like, and write him off. No, 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 don't write him off. Is God not that big that he could touch somebody and zap him with the Holy Ghost? Let's not write anybody off. Let's not count anybody out. They might not see it yet, but you got to grab that person by the hand and say, hey, man, I believe in you. You may not believe in yourself, but I got you. Just like Jesus led you out of your village. It's the same way some of us got to rise up and say, I'm going to lead you out of your village. We've been seeing breakthroughs. And honestly, these breakthroughs, it's because of this story. I don't give up on people. I say, man, I got you. Whatever I got to do, I got. if I got to call you, I'll call you. If I got to pray with you, I'll pray with you. Whatever I got to do, I'll bring you along. 
man, I'm reading like three different books with three different guys. I'm like, my head is spinning. I don't care because some of these guys are getting it. Because we're just leading them by the hand and say, come on, man. Let's get out of that village. Come on, man. You're better than this. Come on, man. Let's do this. I feel like there's some people here today that need to get out of that village and say, man, I'm greater than this. I've been in a slump. I've been on a down. But you know what? I'm ready to get out of this thing. I'm ready to lead out of this thing. Because I know I have a life worth living for. I know I got a vision. I know I got purpose. So let me ask you, church. Are you ready to go to your next destination? Are you ready to give God your hand and say, God, lead me wherever you want to lead me. Do whatever you want to do in my life. I'm tired of being the same year after year. Tonight is the night I'm about to break loose. Tonight is the night I'm stepping in to my destiny. Woo! Listen, as the Holy Spirit moves in this place, I feel like we're going to have some breakthrough tonight. I feel like we're going to have some breakthroughs. I feel like God's going to open up some, some eyes, some some spiritual blindness. I feel like we got it tonight. We're going to open this altar. We're going to sing this song. I want you to come from the back all the way from, to the front. Come from the middle. Come from the left. Come from the right. Come. Make your way out here. Give God your hand and say, God, I'm willing to trust you.